going to record our re reading, okay? So, already. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. It starts with Genesis. Four books in the class Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. So. A little strange on my computer, so I'm going to pull it up on my Kindle because it sent it over to this. Okay. Give me just one moment. Is is the first section here called the vision of creation? That's exactly right. I'm looking at. Yeah, it. I, I'm on the right thing. Then I think. Okay, I'm gonna read for the first parts. If that's okay for you, then that's great. We change the uh, because I never read these things. You know me, so I don't yeah. know what's going on. If we had to change the textbook, whatever we can read other books okay but i like his writing i have a when i read the book david um i have the ambition said hey i want i really wanted to read his uh, expositions you know so and uh, yeah and uh, anyway uh the vision of creation um we're gonna read this part and privately we might want to study a little bit the background sure. of this author, in making sense, you know, I think it will be on Wikipedia. I don't know much about him, okay? So, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So, the vision of creation, the whole title is, this is a book on iBook or Ample Store called Works Alexander McLaurin. We read it before David's life through the Psalms by the same author. We enjoyed it. Uh, so this is a, another book going through the Bible, the title called Expositions of Holy Scripture. In this section, or in this book, there are four books in the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. We start with having the Genesis. The title is The Vision of Creation. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the foes of the air, and over the cattle, and all, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing, then creepeth it upon the earth. So God created by his own image, in the image of God, created he him, male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And we have a dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fall of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is a fruitful tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, that is for food. I'm gonna comment uh, here and there, okay? So yeah. yeah. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the earth, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. And I have given every green herb for me. It was so, and God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening, the morning, was the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them, and on the seventh day God ended the work which he had made, and rest on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. That is, all his work is all creation, am I? It's a creative work. Mm -hmm. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that's in it, and the rest is from all his work which God created and made. Genesis 1, 23 to 2, 3. We're not to look at Genesis from the scientific cosmology, cosmo, cosmogony, I'm sorry, and was and are to be disturbed by physicists' criticisms on it as such. Its purpose is quite another and far more important, namely, to imprint deep and invisible the conviction that the one God created all things. No must it be forgotten. 
that this wisdom of full creation was given to people ignorant of natural science and prone to fall back into surrounding idolatry. The comparison of creation narratives in Genesis with the cuneiform tablets with which they are evidently are most closely connected. Uh, that is, I think, a Sumer's tablet, a tablet basically discovered mm. through archaeology, uh, archaeology efforts. Making sense to you? You know, talking about yeah. certain creation stories. So, has for its most important result the demonstration of uh, infinite elevation of both their monstrosities and uh, puerilities. Uh, is English pretty old and uh, strange? <laughs> Those words I don't know. So. I'm going to yeah. bypass those things because we want to pace on or sometime we just bypass whole session because, you know, not relevant to the major purpose we try to go through the Bible. Make it sense to you? So, sure. So. Of this Solomon city fast attribution, attribution of the greedy act to the one God, here we can only draw out in brief the main points which the narrative brings into prominence. One, the revelation which it gives is the truth obscured to all other men what is given that one God in the beginning created the heaven and the earth. That the Solomon entrance is a keynote of the whole. The rest but expands it was a challenge and a denial for all the beliefs of the nations of truth of which Israel with a champion and a missionary is sweet swept the heavens and the earth, cleared the crowd of gods, and showed the one enthroned above and operative in all things. We can scarcely estimate the grandeur, the emancipating power, and the all uniting force of that utterance. It is a warm commonplace to us. It was a strange, a thrilling novelty when it was written in the head of this narrative. Then it was in sharp opposition to believe that a lamb being dead to us, but is still a protest against some living errors. Physical science has now spoken the final word. When it has shown us how things came to be and they are, there remains a deeper question what or who originated and guided the processes. And the only answer, the only answer is the ancient declaration in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Two, the record is as emphatic and as unique as it's teaching us to the mode of creation God said, and it was so. That lifts us above all the poor childish myths of the nation, some of them disgusting, many of them absurd, all of them unworthy. There was no other agency and the putting forth of the divine will of this physical God is but a symbol of the flashing forth of his will. To us Christians, an antique phrase says the fullness of meaning not inherited in it, for we have learned to believe that all things were made by him whose name is the word of God. But apart from that, the representation here is a sublime. He spake and was done. That is the sign manual of a deity. Three. The completeness of creation is emphasized. We note not only the recurrent and it was so, which declares a perfect correspondence result with the divine intention, but also the recurring God saw that it was good. His ideals always realized the divine artist never found that the embodiment of his thought falls short of his thought. What act is always a thought had been? What will but have felt the fleshly scream? But he has no hindrances, no incompleteness in his creative work. And the very Sabbath rest with which the narrative closes symbolizes not his need of repose, but his perfect accomplishment is a purpose. God sees from his works because the works were finished, and he saw that it all was very good. For the progressiveness of the creative process is brought into strong relief. The work of the first four days is the preparation of the dwelling place for living creatures who are afterwards created to inhabit it, 
so far the details of those days work coincide with the order and science has made it out we're not careful to ask here the primeval what is what primeval chaos primeval, yeah mm. primeval chaos is the separation of the waters above from the water beneath the emergency of the land i don't want to presume on you my reading is okay uh, is that okay for you and the reading absolutely yeah okay the emergency of the land the beginning of uh, vegetation there the shining out of the sun and the dense mist cleared all found confirmation even modern theories of evolution but the intention of the whole is much rather to teach that though the simple utterance of the divine will was the agency agent of creation the manner of it was not the silent calling of the world as men knew it into being but a majestic slow at once by stages not at once, am I? Stage by stage, mm. identify by each day's work. Each of which, so the day is an age. That's why Jesus taught Peter, am I? Peter answered in Second Peter, for to God, an age or a day is a thousand years. Making sense to you? So, yeah. yeah. Thousand years is also a symbolic time frame, basically an age. You making sense to you? A millennium mm. is an age, basically. It's not just really exactly thousand years. That's those words, notion uh, borrowed from Jewish thoughts, making Jewish expressions. Yeah. Okay, so that make, that cleared up, am I? Everybody's talking about millennium as with exactly thousand years. Maybe God do precise things, but most likely the implied age, making sense to you? You know, so uh, let's go on. Remember many of the old Asian ones, their life is almost... 500, sometimes even 900 years old, am I? Many generations. So, right. Making sense to you? So, yeah. But the uh, one age that is prior to Noah's time, not your time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Making sense to you? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Slow the ones by stages, each of which rested on the preceding. To apply the old distinction between justification and sanctification, creation was a work, not an act. The divine workman, so it's a work that means stage by stage, a process, am I? Process, From yeah. Beginning to completion, making sense to you? So, yeah. So that's why I rested, rested from his work. He implied a process, am I? And the completion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Omega, uh, Alpha and Omega at the beginning, the end. So, this is very important because most of the time we thought the Christian work, God speak a word, then Things just came to be, am I? Nothing happened. No time frame uh, attached you to it. It's a sudden work. Is it making sense to you? You know, mm -hmm. so, but it's not. So, so it's a growth and the maturity uh, of uh, a spiritual man, am I? Individually. individually. So it's as a whole, this is work through the ages, stage by stage, comes to completion. Making sense to you? You know, yeah. so. So divine workman, who is always patient, Work slowly than that he does now, not as a leap, as a leap, but by deliberate steps, the divine ideal attains realization. Five. The creation of the living creatures on the fourth and fifth days is so arranged as to lead up to the creation of man as a climax. On the fifth day, sea and air are peopled, and their denizens, denizens, blessed. That's an interesting word, Denise and citizens, basically, huh? That's what mm. okay. For the eco divine love holds every living thing to its heart. On the sixth day, the earth is replenished with living creatures, and last of all comes man, the apex of creation. Obviously, the purpose as a whole is to concentrate the light on man. It is a matter of no importance whether the narrative is correct according to zoology, zoology or not. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> Definitely science, Darwinism, begin to gain um, inferences, am I? So begin to challenge those, um, yeah. you know, uh, understanding through biblical narratives, am I? So about the creation story. So I think he was, um, you know, this, this author is in the thick of it. 
facing those challenges and making sense to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's today. So what it says is that God made all the universe and it prepares the earth for the delight of the living creatures. Then a happy birds of the sword and the same, the dumb creatures that have moved through the passes, the seas, and the beasts of the earth at all his creating, and that man is linked to them, being made on the same day and the latter, and by the same word, but that between men and them all there is a gulf, since he's made in the divine image. That image implies personality, the consciousness of the self, the power to say I, as well as purity. The transition from the work of the first four days to then creating living things must have a hand a break. No theory has been made. Being able to bridge the chasm without admitting the divine act introducing the new element of life, none has been able to bridge the gulf between the animal and the human consciousness without admitting the divine act introducing the image of God into the nature common to animal anima that is very important am right so yeah you imply the image of god is more than a physical form making sense to you you know so he implied his uh natural endowments am i his intellectual endowments emotional endowments even spiritual endowment am i as a man right it's much superior and more complex uh absent um in the animal compared in, compared to other beasts, making some other creatures. Mm-hmm. So in the light, the image of God uh, is, is almost like you create a computer, am I? You understand my point? It's right. not metals, wires, or different parts, but it come in you know, the physical part is good. You know, you understand my the, maybe the best mm-hmm. design computer, but it does not have a program or capacity to process it. Making sense to you? you know, right. So, um, so in man, the most important part in Diamond, beyond his physical makeup, is his intellectual makeup. Am I spiritual in Diamond? Yeah. Make sense to you? You know. So, so the image of God there is more than image. It's something patterned after, like you print on something. The word literally in Hebrew word means you seal something. When you put the mold on something, it's it's a seal. Am I? That's why you the seal. It's reflections the the thing that it was 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 meaning the mode making sense to you you know imprinting the mode so it's an imprint something and making sense to you it's very important to understand that so man was a perfect representation uh, of God's capacity a man to emotion to will to think and to, to communicate making sense to you you know so yeah and uh, that's why. Uh, he brought the book, I understand this, and said in the beginning, he was there, am I? But he was a re- perfect representation, that means he's an exact imprint, okay, of God. But beyond angels, more excellent than angels, am I? More excellent than the blessedness of Moses, with making sense to you? You know, right. it's speaking more than uh, a, a life form. In two chapter, continue talking about, you made him a little lower than angels, that is divine beings, Elohim, but giving him greater honor, am I? In the sense that the making sense to you is this, mm-hmm. this mindset um, um, or lens of uh, understanding concerning the creative story, am I, of a man in the beginning. This is important for us, okay? So, right. um, three, let's continue. Three facts as to humanity. A threw up into prominence, its possession, uh, possession of the image of God, the equality, and internal interdependence of the sexes, the lordship over all creatures. Three things, what are the three things? In possession of the image of God, am I right? So the second, yeah. equality and internal interdependence as a partnership, am I right? Of the right. male and female as a partner, am I? Of life. So mm-hmm. they, uh, together, partner together as one covenantal position, am I? And privileges to lord over, am I? That exercise governance over other creatures. Making sense to you? Mm-hmm. So that's three things. Okay. 
Mark, especially the remarkable wording of verse 27, created him, him, male and female created he them, he them, so neither is a woman without a man, nor a man without a woman. They are one. Each is maimed apart from the other, both stand side by side, on one level before God. The germ of the most advanced doctrines of this relation to sexes is a hidden here. With that, we're going to continue, okay? The next section, mm -hmm. whole thing comes in. Okay. For the most part, I might do the reading because I uh, invoke my thoughts and I can comment to stop there, okay? Unless sure. certain times, you know, we will not have you to read the special scriptures. Is that okay for you? So Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay. We'll wrap it up here for this session then. Okay, so.